All right, here we go. Greetings, Kindred. I am Voivode Maquette. Uh, with me is Silent Comedy, and this is Tapping the Vein. Uh, a whole new segment for our world of darkness where we are going to be digging deep into our opinions and uh, the various uh, information that's out there concerning the, the clans of Vampire the Masquerade. Say hi, Silent. Hello. Hello. <laughs> uh, just to let everybody know, Silent and I have worked together on a bunch of stuff, a bunch of different stuff, primarily uh, the discords that are connected to our world of darkness. So we've known each other for a while. I'd say we're pretty good friends at this point. Yeah. Friendship going on pretty strong for three years now. Yeah. Yeah. This is uh, and actually I met you through the channel. So that's like freaking yeah. amazing to me. Yeah. I, I found your channel at like just under like just under 200 subscribers. God, that's crazy. And, uh, and, and I joined, I think I was like the 202nd, 203rd subscriber to the channel. <laughs> and we are, uh, we are pushing 2000 at this point. We're at like, I know, uh, 1970. Crazy. Yeah. That's insane. It's very cool. Yeah. All right. It's, it's, it's honestly a pretty good community. I've been happy to be <laughs> admin on the discord and like get to know everybody. I've, I've made a lot of friends through this. Yeah. This yeah. No, I, I've noticed I've a lot of people who are part of the, our, our world of darkness community have, have really come together to create a, uh, an interesting, like just not really, not even a fan base, a community. Like people have become friends yeah. off of this. Absolutely. The, uh, from the dark Knights storyline, yes. uh, the player of the player of Paul, he and I met through, your discord oh and really have been, yeah and we talk daily i mean almost almost wow daily. i didn't realize yeah. that yeah so it's a great community i'm happy to be a part of it and i'm really excited for tapping the vein as a tapping series the vein. it's a, <laughs> it's a great name <laughs> i'm giving you 100 percent credit for the name also and oh, the wow. idea the whole idea was to exp yeah. expand the clan discussions to actually being a discussion and not just me sitting and talking to a camera well, I remembered you always saying like you wanted uh, that you kind of look back at those and cringe, and you wanted to to kind of bring those I do. forward with with the new flavor and style of the channel. I, I do, I um, do cringe, but they're like also some of like the most popular videos. Oh, I I have probably contributed a hundred views <laughs> scattered amongst them myself. So. Well, thank you, I appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, getting if, if getting enough to like on all of them. I'm going to <laughs> getting to the heart of the matter. Tapping the vein. Mm -hmm. uh, we are talking about Clan Bruja today, or the Bruja, and uh, and their placement in the world of darkness as of fifth edition. Uh, our experience with them, the changes that they've gone through, and all that. So <laughs> let's go ahead and get started with that. Yeah. Um, what is your first? Ex Actually, yeah. Let's start with that. What's your first experience, either playing or dealing with? A Bruja. Okay. Um, my first experience with a Bruja was my second character who died after my first character was killed by a Lasombra. Okay. Uh, and that character in his first session had his arms ripped off, his legs <laughs> ripped off, and his face put, pressed against the spinning wheel of an upside down motorbike. Wow, Bruja punishment. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I should have clarified before going into that gruesome story that it was a Sabat game. Oh, <laughs> so, okay, okay, okay. So an anti-tribute. Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know if we should possibly do anti-tribute separately. Oh, I, I don't know. I mean, they're technically... Like that, uh, they are technically yeah. the same, but they've been warped severely by experience. Oh, uh, that's true, yeah. We might, you know, later down the road, we might, uh, we might circle back and do, like, just like a two or three part... Yeah, anti-tribute. Anti-tribute. Yeah, that would be fun. That would be fun. Uh, mine, personally, uh, the first the first Bruja I ever met, actually, uh, my player in Thicker Than Water, um, Gwen, uh, who is currently playing uh, Signy, uh, uh, Sydney the Tremere, um, mm -hmm. he, uh, he played a character named D uh, John Buchanan for years. And he was just my end-all, be-all source for who Bruja is, like what they yeah. are. And... Um, but then, like, I didn't play a Bruja until years later, and everybody who watches Thicker Than Water will know who Rhino is. Um, oh, yeah. Rhino was my first Bruja character. Oh, really? I did yeah. not know that. I, I played a uh, I played a mute. Uh, he was an old uh, he was an old runner for the mafia um, uh, character uh, who uh, lost his voice to a to to a tragic attack. I'll just put it that way. I don't want to get too gory. Um, oh. 
but uh, he was embraced right after. And, uh, yeah, he ran around with a chalkboard that primarily said fuck you on it. And, <laughs> <laughs> and I had a baseball bat, and Rhino was short for rip you a new one, and he was just, he was a very fun character. Yeah. I I love the the Ripia new one. That one's that's really <laughs> clever. That's, that's one of been one of my like favorite things from the <laughs> cast of uh, Thicker Than Water is Rhino. Rhino's fun. Uh, and okay. uh, I forget his name, but the 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 grandsire of Tinia, I think it is. Uh, Vincent de Paul. Is that the? Maybe it's not the one I'm thinking of. It's the one that when the SI were pumping the city full of gas. Uh, she went to a bar and was like talking to him, and he was just a real like uh, colorful character. I don't yeah, remember his no, name that's now. Vincent. That's Vincent. Is it okay? Yeah, no, Vincent's story is very interesting. Like, I could, we could go into that. Like, I feel like talking about Vincent would be the whole hour, um, <laughs> truthfully, because he's he's quickly become one of my favorite NPCs because he's been revealed of being this he he was this loving caring I'm here to help you mentor type character and then over time as he's gotten more comfortable in the city and settled into his position as a leadership of the of the anarchs he's just the sleaziest asshole <laughs> <laughs> and people are actually like just emotionally devastated by the the complete switch of the character because that... everybody just thought he was this uh, calm, collected, like, scholarly Bruja elder. And he's just ready to set shit on fire. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> I, think that's a, I think that's a great summary of the clan, you know, in its whole. Yeah, yeah. They're right? smart, yeah. but they've got that fire. Oh, they've got plenty of that. And yeah. especially in the anti-tribute. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, my take on the Bruja is... I, you know, the Bruja is one of those clans. I've only ever played uh, one Bruja. Okay. Um, and he was definitely more of the... Uh, like, I played him, he was a Sect War veteran. Um, <clears throat> and he was a... One of these... I forget what they're called. The The specific term is like Kappa or, or something. The soldier of a Mafia family. Yeah, Kappa. Or a yeah, Kappa. Kappa. Well, that's like the leader. Yeah, yeah. He was He was one of the one of the higher ups, right? Like he sat at the table with the other members of the mafia mm. um, and, and answered to the underboss. And like the, basically the only people above him were the underboss and the boss. Okay. You know, now question, um, question about this character. Was he one of the lost bloodline? Was he a Caravelli? Uh, I, that's over my head. I don't know. Okay. That, that, that was like from vampire, the masquerade first edition uh, there. Uh, if, if you've ever watched kindred, the embraced, I have, yeah. Um, there, the Caravelli are effectively who the Bruja from that show were based off of. They were a slick mafia family. Anything, anything illegal and mafia related you ever heard about the Giovanni were actually this family of Bruja, who were like basically framing the Giovanni the whole time. Okay. Like they just hated them, um, and they were they were a pretty nasty bloodline of Bruja who had uh, they had celerity, potence, and dominate. Oh, okay. yeah, they're a pretty interesting, p pretty interesting group. I, I like them a lot. I'll, I'll have to, I'll have to research those because I, I, I hard to find. Yeah, I didn't even know they existed, and I've been a fan of this, you know, setting for a long time. Mm -hmm. Um, no, he wasn't intentionally. Um, but he, the way you describe that, actually makes me think maybe he should have been because the other members, the other like the underboss, the Don, everybody at the table, they were all Bruja from mm -hmm. the same line. Okay. They were a family of Bruja uh, mafiosos. Yeah, that sounds like the Caravelli. <laughs> and uh, and so, you know, he was, uh, I w he was inspired by some personal things that I was going through at that time of my life, but mm -hmm. also just the the embodiment of what Nines Rodriguez stands for from Bloodlines, right? Okay. From LA, is that he was the leader that everybody wanted, but not the lead, but he didn't want to be the leader. Okay. So he had this sect war veteran style uh, reputation of when turn when it came to blows with the Camarilla, like he was vicious. I mean, just absolutely unrelenting in his fury against this, you know, these chains that people were trying to put on him and put him in his place. 
and his sire uh, was was uh, a big contributor to a lot of like his personal um, his personal growth because okay. his sire like his sire was an anarch as well and his sire like urged him you know like the whole family kind of stood separate and like they were very ingrained in their in their business in the mortal world. And they weren't going to have the Camarilla coming in and putting sanctions down on them and telling them what they can and can't do, right? Yeah. yeah. They, they're going to do what they need to do to take care of business. And that's kind of so – his sire kind of raised him up and instilled that in him. Um, but he – when it came down when it came down to it, he had his finger on the pulse of every single thing going on in his territory. In his nice. domain, he had he had people at the – like at the horse tracks. He had people at the – in the you know doing business in the in the city and what i did was i took a variety of merits and lore sheets to kind of compile a group of like six um loyal people under him okay and each one of them had dots of influence right very cool so like he had a he had like a blackmail a guy that was like specifically you know that was his thing he blackmailed to get things done okay um he had another guy who was like who who had uh connections in the um like underworld like chop shops and like you know cars and stuff mm-hmm. so he had he had connections and and influence from high and low in his domain Very in cool. his territory and if people came through that like camarilla were, were seen coming through like he would he would cut them off he would he would find out where they're going you know follow them whatever keep tabs on them and before they could leave his domain he was put in a fisty face. Mm. Like that was that was the way he ruled his his domain. Okay. Um, and he died. He died a martyr uh, <laughs> against the Venture Prince, who was actually a, my character Donigan, um, that a friend of mine was using as the as the prince. So <clears throat> it was a fun character. But yeah, I mean the Bruja to me are they are unbridled passion. I don't, I don't think you can have a complacent bruja is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. I you think even I mean? if like, they're acting complacent they're hiding something at that point. Yeah. Yeah, if they're acting complacent they're it's it's for a purpose, mm-hmm. a, a larger purpose. I don't think you can have a, a a bruja who doesn't have a vision or doesn't have like a sense of ethics that they feel is undyingly correct, you mm-hmm. know. Um I think in in our modern culture not to get too political in this conversation but i think in our modern modern culture, the bruja is the right place to put that yeah the bruja like if in our modern culture the bruja are in power right now mm, that's they're, that's they're, very they're, true that's very true the the the, the majority of camarilla cities right now in our modern world are bruja prince led or bruja are See, anarch led that's actually one of the first things that i wanted to cover uh in this whole thing is the societal changes of the bruja is that they have gone to being one of the pillar clans of the Camarilla to, in one swift motion, becoming almost primarily Anarch. Yeah. That's crazy, uh, in my opinion. Like, like usually you look at an Anarch and you go, that's Clan Bruja. Like, regardless. Like, it could be a Toreador, it's a Bruja. Like, with the way they, like, stereotypically, the way that the, the Anarchs dress and stuff like that. But, like, the idea... Of the Anarch is the Bruja. It's rebellious. It's it's fighting the system, but they've always had a place in the Camarilla, and now they just don't. Like you still find Bruja in the Camarilla, right? But they're not. They they have no hardline leaders. Like if they don't have a Justicar backing, most cities don't have a Bruja Primogen. Like it's it just it doesn't. They don't they don't have the backing anymore. What what do you think I about have, that? <clears throat> yeah, I have. I, I have a take on this that I don't think a lot of people consider, and maybe maybe I'm just flat out at the end of the day, my opinion's wrong in some capacity, but I think that the Bruja never really belonged in the Camarilla in the first place, and I'm going to well, explain why. the Anarchs they, were part of the Camarilla. Well, hear, hear me out, right? Because they had, they had a Justicard, right? They, or they, they had Primogen, and, and they had that like higher tier backing, right? Yeah. But let's, let's kind of look take the like wind the clock back right the bruja they were never built they were never fitted to actually belong in the camarilla mm-hmm. i think that the bruja came to be one of the founding pillars of the camarilla out of necessity to keep the ventru from overruling them 
Well, if you want to look at it also, you know the rebelliousness of the Bruja? Yeah. Imagine the status quo 500 years ago in Vampire the Masquerade. It right. was the rebellious stance to try to enforce the Masquerade. It was the rebellious stance to try to get the the, the uh, elders to change their mind to form a coalition of clans. Like, the Camarilla was the rebellious idea. Okay. I see. I'd never really considered it that way, but like, I, I, I the convention, see that the, con my, yeah. the convention of thorns. If you look at the the manuscripts and everything, it says that only fifty vampires showed up, and that yep. was the largest gathering of vampires at the time. Yeah. So it was the rebellious idea to tell everybody that the elders are just wrong, and it's time to form a group of vampires that watch each other's backs. Okay. See, uh, my take on that was that, and and I, I really, first of all, I want to say like I really like that perspective, and you you've all but changed my mind on this. Um, <laughs> but my my I, my original take on it was that the because we know that the Venture have always been staunch supporters of a system of a hierarchy yes, of a system, not necessarily the system we have now. Right, but the 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 my take on it was is that the the Bruja conflicts with the Ventru clan that go back forever, right? Mm -hmm. And so my thoughts on it were that the formation of the Camarilla was, while it might have been the rebellious thing at the time, and and I definitely think there were Bruja who probably believed, right, that that was the that was their cause to fight for, and that's mm -hmm. probably why those that still fight for the Camarilla are so staunchly loyal, right? But I feel like they came to the Camarilla because of out of necessity to keep the Ventru in check. Because the Ventru, the way I see it was, is like the Ventru were spearheading this coalition that was going to set forth new law and new uh, that's, parameters. That's, true. that's very true. And so the Bruja, not wanting to be powerless in this new coalition of law and sanctions, basically said... It, well, if we can't beat them, we need to join them effectively, and we'll control it from the inside. So I don't think that the Bruja really ever belonged in the Camarilla to begin with. I think it was a choice the clan made as a, as a necessity mm -hmm. to ensure that law, the new era of law, was going to be fair and and not basically a, a Ventru uh, tyr like tyranny, basically. Yeah. I mean, and then let's and let's think back to it too, like. Out of all the clans, the Ventru are obviously one of the best to lead, but the Bruja are also really good leaders. No, that's absolutely true. I mean, anything that has the ability to... Um, I, I, think the, I think that point that you just made there about them both being good leaders is the idea of a manager versus a shift leader. <laughs> you yeah. know, like you got the Ventru who are going to sit there and tell you what to do. You got mm -hmm. the Bruja who are going to be in front showing you Doing what to do. You. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And I think that I think that, that the fact that the Bruja and the Venture were even able to put their like centuries of, of hate of to amnesty, the side. Yeah, yeah. Of well, amnesty I mean, with one another they're to looking the at the Inquisition. Coexist. Well, true, yeah. I mean the, that's no light subject and we shouldn't shouldn't overlook that detail. No, no, but that is definitely the, like the, the the alliance between the Camaro or the Bruja and the Venture was forged in the fires of the Inquisition. Yeah. Plus that's you can't you can't Camarilla. just let the you can't just let the Venture and the Toridor sit in a room together without a Bruja being there to make sure that like they're not just gonna exactly. turn into a petty little girls' club and start like <laughs> Exactly. And, and <laughs> the mean <laughs> girls club of the Camarilla would just be horrible oh. without the without the uh, Bruja involved. If you like, look at it this way: if we took the if if the foundation of the Camarilla, and we completely removed the Bruja's influence in that foundation, what would the Camarilla look like today? It would be a Ventru tyranny. Oh, completely, one hundred percent, and one hundred percent of Ventru clan tyranny of supremacy over all the other clans because they were the first, you know, they were the best suited to lead and bear the burdens and whatever. And then you would have this underlying backstabbing brood of vipers yeah. that are the Toreador thinking that they're the ones really in charge and that they're the ones manipulating the venture and it would it would self implode on itself. It needed that Yeah, third it wouldn't it wouldn't social... have lasted it wouldn't have lasted five hundred years. Right. And so like I again I really I my original take on it was that the Bruja it was to stay it was basically to keep up with the times. Mm-hmm. 
and to make sure that it didn't get away from them so that they couldn't fight back. Okay. That, that yeah, makes that was, a lot of sense. Yeah. That's, that's just always been my perspective on it, but I really like your perspective on it as well as it being like this. Yeah, it was the, the it was the rebellious. Yeah, the Camarilla was the rebellious uh was the rebellious notion back then. So that's why it well, always made sense to me. It well, I don't really think that I never really saw the Camarilla as the rebellious notion because well, the it, majority of the elders didn't want to do that. They wanted everything to stay the same and they were okay with the idea of just throwing the inquisition at the at the rebels, at the at the anarchs. Um right. but like the the little room the, the coterie that was the Camarilla that has turned into the Ivory Tower, they, like, they wanted to put an end to it by, by going to ground. Right. Well, see, because I always understood, like, the whole... And maybe maybe I have been brainwashed with Sabat uh, propaganda, but my take on it was that the Anarchs at the time <laughs> were the younger vampires. For the most part. For the most part, they got tired and, of the blood and bond and everything, and then the Zemisi helped them the break bond, it. And... and the Zemisi helped them break it, and then you had, you know, the Camarilla saying, "Here's a port. We can, you know, we can all kind of come together, and and our elders will still stay on top." And the Anarchs were like, "No, <laughs> that's the problem. The Anar the the elders are still on top." They that that is absolutely true, but it was only a group of like one member from each clan that was pushing for that idea. Right. The rest okay. of the elders were like, uh, "We've been doing this since like time, immem you know, immemorable. Why would we change anything? It works very well so far." Yeah, like that's when there was not a masquerade; there was the silence of the blood, uh, which is a completely yep. different ruling. Yeah, they, they they still adhered to the laws of Cain at that time. Exactly. Exactly. To the tenets of Cain, or after the creed, I forget what they called them. There was something of Cain. I think there were still just the traditions of Cain, but they just dropped of Cain. Yeah. And then yeah. they took they took the sixth tradition and turned it into the first tradition and changed the name and made it a little bit more strict. Yeah, but yeah, um, they just rebranded. <laughs> so the Bruja, uh, they have gone through one of the least severe changes mechanically uh, as any of the clans. They still have yep. the they still have the disciplines that they were marked with at the beginning. They've got their uh, they've got their celerity. They've got their uh, their potence and they've got their presence. Yeah. Um, do you feel that they should have had any kind of change work over with the disciplines or do you think that they are good where they are? I personally think that they're perfect exactly as they are They're They're physically one of the most terrifying clans and socially they have such a dynamic bearing that they can direct, they can direct armies of either kindred or humans to do their bidding. Yeah. The, I'll, I'll say this, and I think this will summarize my point as to where I stand on the, the changes, the lack of changes to the Bruja. Mm -hmm. That Bruja I was mentioning that I played earlier, the largest die pool to this date that I have ever rolled for a social role yeah. was a 17 die die pool from that character. Definitely. And I didn't have a discipline above three dots in that with that character at the time that I made that role. Like, okay. it, was, it was a lot of like lore sheets and, and influence and status and stuff, but um, I mean, yeah, it was like, if it's not broke, don't fix it. And that's, I know that's like, I, I know that's yeah, that's kind of a cop take. out. That's a cop out for most well, things, but I got to agree I, with yeah, you. Yeah, but I'm saying like, it, it's yeah, it's it's not an exciting uh you know conversational retort, mm -hmm. but it is it's the it's the it's simple true. fact that it's absolutely true though. And I think it I I do think in a in a degree of kind of getting into like the like the the deeper underlying tones of it right or the interpretations is that the clan who fights the most for change should always stay the same yeah that's that you know what that's ironically poetic yeah um i, I it's one of my favorite things about the the clan is like just a, a brand right with the uh with the concept though like totally they ha they are the fastest they are the yep. strongest and they are m the most personally dynamic and those qualities right there for better or for worse, make... I'm not using good as in, like, positivity, but good as in quality, mm -hmm. if that makes any sense, Yeah. Uh, of leadership. Like, if you piss off a Bruja Baron or a, a Bruja Prince, there's a good chance that they are going to be faster than you. Yep. If 
they're not faster than you, there's a good chance they're going to be stronger than you. Yep. So you better hope you're fucking faster. And there's a good chance that they are going to be able to turn the entire Elysium or gang or whatever their social circles are against you. Yep. And that is I, terrifying. They, the Bruja are terrifying oh, it's leaders. Absolutely frightening. It is the it is the um, the off the op the almost the direct opposite of what I always say for the the Ventru, which I know this is about the Bruja and we'll come to them later. Yeah, yeah. But my thing with the Ventru, and I'll say it again when we come to it, was they have the ability to make you not want to hurt me. Yeah, I can if see you, that. If you if if I fail to make you not want to do it, then I'll just make you not do it. And then if that <laughs> fails, good luck trying to do it. Right. Yeah. So the Bruja are the opposite of that. It's like. If I want to get you, I'll get you. If I want to hurt you, I'll hurt you. And if I want to ruin you, I'll ruin you. You know. Yeah. And so I, I I completely agree with you. I think it's I think that what the Bruja have in fifth edition is it's just it's just good. It's reliable. Yeah. No, it fits. Uh, and it fits narratively, it's frightening. You know, I I I've never really felt compelled or like drawn to the Bruja as a clan. Mm-hmm. But but. I have to respect what they like, what they are as as they're presented in the narrative and what as they're presented in the mechanics. I have respect for it, yeah. and I, I've I've been I've been on the receiving end of that celerity and potence, and it's not fun. <laughs> um, I have a question for you though. Yeah, when, yeah. It pertains to this topic. How do you? How like I'm I'm a big fan, and as people come to know me as we go through this series, they'll come to learn this. I'm a big fan of going against type. Okay. But the Brua are both the punks and the scholars, mm-hmm. the rabble and and the you know the uh, gen- gentlemen. Yeah, you know the the disordered and the mannerly. So, how do you play a Bruja out of like against type with these themes? Like, what's, See, what's that a- that actually bleeds over into the next topic I wanted to cover? Okay, yeah, go with for this, it. So, so thank you for offering me such a wonderful segue. Because uh, I'm trying, I'm trying to cover the stuff that's in the books, okay. and what we have here is uh, the next thing that I wanted to cover was weaknesses. Oh, and okay. um, and I really hate how the uh, I really hate how the core book has this listed. the The player's guide is so much better. Um, oh yeah, <laughs> give me one second. The um, the thing that I wanted to talk about was was the downsides of the clan, and so we've got the bane. Right. And the Bane simply states that the blood of the Bruja simmers with uh, barely contained rage, exploding at the slightest provocation, subtract dice equal to the Bane severity of the Bruja from any roll to resist Fury Frenzy. This cannot take the pool below one die. So they're always constantly on the edge of anger for one Are reason they? or another. Like, even if, even if they don't feel it, the slightest provocation... We'll set them off. There are two traits down, or sorry, not. I, I always want to say two traits because most of the banes are, are two trait plus something. Yeah, but they are they are uh, dice equal to their bane severity. So which, start, which starts at two? Which so, yeah, starts it's... at two, and then like the the higher blood potency is, the higher your your bane severity is. So it gets worse and worse and worse with age, um, yeah. which which actually makes a lot of sense. Because I've become pissier with age. Uh, <laughs> I'm an angry, cranky mean, old cranky Bruhaw. old man. And <laughs> um, How Critias walks around Chicago and teaches <laughs> college students, I'll never know. He's gone. He's had a lot of torpor in your your blood your blood potency drops. He's still blood potency six, dude. That's true. But the the whole concept that um, they like, I'll I'll cover this a lot. But when it comes to the bane and the compulsions. For 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 characters, right. the way that I've always seen it is that is the Andaluvian reaching out through the blood and taking control. So you can play a character that's based on anything. You can you can take what would be, and I understand what you're saying. Uh, the the Bruja are all over the damn place. Yeah, because they are chosen for so many different reasons. They're chosen because they're good fighters. They're chosen because they're intellectuals. They're chosen because they understand the modern times. They're chosen because they're socially adept. Like, there's so many reasons to choose yeah. out of the Bruja. And 
the Bruja, in my opinion, are the anybody could be this vampire. The the really? I the yeah, in in my opinion, the Bruja, like if you if you were to take away all clans, I would base Vampire the Masquerade strictly off Clan Bruja. Just be just because you literally could play anybody. You could play an artist. You could play a politician. You could play a gang leader. You could play a socialite. You could you could get away with any kind of character and just have that danger of pissing that person off is a bad thing. I think, yeah, I, I, I guess I had never really thought about it that way. I mean, the Bruja are the... You know, when you think about vampires in, in media, right? Mm-hmm. They're fast, they're strong, and they're sexy. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, no, that's um, it. Is the the Bruja have some of the quintessential vampire, vampire powers. powers? Yeah, and yeah. So I guess I've never really thought about it. I, we, which we talk, we'll talk about this when we get to them uh, again. But I actually have a take on which clan is the Everyman clan, mm-hmm. um, and and I'm excited to talk about that. But yeah, we, but yeah, I, I know what yeah. you're gonna, I know what you're gonna say, and I, yeah, no, you've you you've convinced <laughs> me. <laughs> but but the but I I'd never seen the Bruja as the Everman clan because they because of the like. The basis, like the the very core, fundamental, foundational part of the clan, is fitted to anybody. Mm-hmm. But it also isn't because of the the characters who aren't necessarily physical characters. With them, and this gets less into the narrative and more into the mechanical. But like characters who don't have the physical dipoles to back up the speed and back up the strength, mm-hmm. are gonna fumble to do either very well. Okay. Now, getting into the narrative part of that is they are they are at least in the modern nights culturally yes they take from anybody, but the Bruja culture has shifted. Oh, to, severely! It's necessity now. It, it's you have to have a purpose. You have to have something that you're fighting. They're not just going to embrace just the everyman kind of character. Mm-hmm. they they you. That's what I said at the beginning of the video. Is you can't really play a complacent Bruja. And I mean, what I mean by that is, like, every Bruja, at least in the social way that they talk about, like, who they embrace and why they embrace, mm. you have these characters who are, like, in their blood, they are driven to to fight and to rebel, right? Yeah. And so you take a person, regardless of who they were in life, you take the person, you force them into this, this box, and then tell me who they're going to embrace. Are they going to embrace... The every guy, the everyday guy with road rage, the, uh, or are they no, going to embrace gonna, the activist who's fighting for a cause? No, right? they're going to rebelling for a cause. I, I can, I can see that. I can definitely see them embracing the protest sticker, but they're also going to embrace that person who's tired of their boss changing their schedule on them every time they get the chance. They're, yeah. they're, they're going to embrace the people who have those mundane frustrations that are just waiting. To have that one bad day. Okay. Like at that point in time. It, like I'm going to just go ahead and reference the movie Falling Down. The movie Falling Down. Is about a guy who's just had enough. He starts off in traffic. On a hot day. With a fly in his car. And he ends up with an. He ends up with a freaking assault rifle. On a pier. During a busy gathering of people. Like it, it, it's literally. He just wow. had enough. And yeah. it's it's not a movie where you glorify the hero. Yeah. He is yeah. not a I'm, hero. I'm, he is not a protagonist. You are following the antagonist through the yeah. entire thing. And it just gets worse and worse and worse. And it really is the downward spiral of okay. Clan Bruja when you watch that movie. Like, you look at Michael Douglas's character in the movie Falling Down, and he does not look like a Bruja. He looks like an accountant. I'm pretty sure Ooh. his character was an accountant. And his character oh. has just snapped. That's fascinating. I had never considered the Ruha. Like like the guy who's just the embracing the guy who's never cut loose. Yes. That's how you play that's how you play against tight. So so uptight, so wound up. And then all of a sudden just, the Bruha pours out. And they break. Exactly. And they just snap. And then they're they're never the same after <laughs> that's uh, that is fascinating. I, I, I'm actually going to add that to my list of, of character <laughs> experience. Because so, I'd never thought about it that way. I'd always thought that your character had to be, like, the way it's portrayed, it always come off to me, and my interpretation was, 
you had to play somebody who was already, you know, this, you know, and obviously there's no you have no, to do anything. No, no, no. Play, but, the, play but, the guy but, who's never yelled. Play, play, is, play the oh, guy who is the who is the eye of the storm. He is the oh calm. My, can you imagine? Can you imagine for a second? <laughs> that's the guy that everybody knows in the Elysium as the Bruja. Yeah. He's the man with the least of spoken words. He's the man with the most pristine composure. The most, the most stoic character. Yeah. And then they see him twitch. Have you ever seen SLC Punk? Like, I have not. Okay, it is. Uh, it's Salt Lake. It, it's Salt Lake City Punk. Uh, it's one of Matthew Lillard, who, by in my opinion, is like King Bruja. Um, <laughs> it is the perfect. It is. It is the perfect Anarch movie. Okay. And uh, what's his name? Uh, Jason. Um, uh, I cannot remember his name. The guy from How I Met Your Mother. Um, oh, I'm, I'm not familiar. Unfortunately. Okay. Well, there's there's an actor. I'll probably put his picture up, but um, with his name because I suck at remembering <laughs> things like that. He plays like it's it's a whole it's a whole like the movie is full of leather clad, dyed hair, spiked, shaven, piercing, tattooed, classic punks. And then you've got this guy who's sitting there at one of these punk parties at a, at a classic Bruja rant, uh, Bruja rave. And he's wearing jeans and he's wearing a collared polo shirt and he's got glasses on and he just does not look like he fits there. And then shit goes down. And he's the most, and he is the, the most, most terrifying character in the damn movie. <laughs> I like that is, that is, yeah, that's the, I mean, that was the point that I was getting to, right? It's yeah. Like, yeah. You're in the Elysium and you see the most like well composed, mannerly guy. Somebody says something and you see him twitch. Yeah, and yeah. That, the, the dread and the terror that that would bring yeah. over the room. People should be like, terrified yeah. to see the Bruja get angry. Yeah, I I feel like I've learned some like a whole new perspective <laughs> to look at the Bruja today. Like honestly, honestly, I mean, I I like I said, I'd never seen them as more than like the people with a cause yeah. you know and the idea that the the guy who's always followed the rules always fell in line never had a chance to just snap and let loose is actually saved by the embrace well the idea of the guy who's always followed the rules always stayed in line and has gotten nothing for it yeah yeah like he has followed all of the rules Ever. and has gotten nothing but pushed down over and over again because of it that's clan bruja in I, my opinion i am going i am going to uh reference a very unpopular movie with very bad physics rules oh go for it um, but have you ever seen have you ever seen wanted oh hell yeah yeah the main character of wanted He's just got that Karen yeah, just you know, I've, down on him. I've always, uh, I've always seen Wanted as like the best Bono Hakim movie ever. Um, hmm? the whole, the whole process of Wanted, the whole, the whole idea of the loom and and all that stuff. Yeah, uh, that's always just like, okay, well, we're training a, we're training a new little baby Asimite now. Um, yeah. <laughs> But now, but no, the, the, I, I can see that. I can the, see that. The, the, the guy's mortal life, yeah. Like that's what that made me think of. So Absolutely. that's awesome. Um, so that's how you play Bruja against type as an answer to my question. Oh hell yeah, hell like, yeah, that's cool. So uh, going on with the Bane being uh, that the the Clan Bane variant is violence. Yeah, it says unliving uh, vectors of revolt. The Bruja cannot help but change things, often violently and not always for the better. While all vampires harbor a capacity for destruction, a hungry Bruja always does some kind of damage. On a messy critical, on any skill test outside of combat, a Bruja vampire causes damage, physical or mental, depending on the situation, to the subject of their interaction equal to their bane severity. So they cause either the, the and it's, it's the damage is aggravated too. So they either cause aggravated willpower or aggravated physical damage to anybody that they are interacting with outside yep. of combat if they get yep. a messy critical. Okay. Yeah. So this is the mechanical representation of your anger, you act out of anger, mm -hmm. 
you you lash out in anger. It's right. It's, so it's literally mental or physical abuse towards someone. Yeah, hundred hundred percent, hundred percent, and it all comes for it's it's painted in the perspective of anger, yeah. right? But I do want to pose, and this might be a curveball, but I want to pose another perspective on this, and I've I've thought about this at length. Okay. I know that the variants are written, you know, for for meta reasons. But if you took the the variant uh, violence, mm-hmm. and you just remove that little thematic of it comes from rage, uh-huh. and replace it with it comes from cold, like detachedness. Well, you're you stepping into true, true bruja. <laughs> yeah, you have you have the true bruja, right? That that does sound like that. Yeah. Because if and if then you're you just oblivious re- to the whole thing. Well, I mean, oh, I'm not sorry. Did I hurt your yeah. feelings? Toughen up, Buttercup. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you yeah. just caused somebody like aggravated damage equal to your bane severity in their willpower, yeah. and you're just like, oh god, come on, stop being a snowflake. Yeah. Like that is the yeah, most yeah. gaslighting asshole vampire. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. But it doesn't just have to be like you said. It's also health damage too, right? So, mm-hmm. well, it, you're going, yeah, it's it's circumstance based. Flavor, yeah, whether you want to flavor them as like your standard ragey bruja or flavor them for the for my brothers out there who uh, adhere to the true bloodline uh, as cold and detached yeah. and emotionless. <laughs> are you are you claiming alias blood at this point? Are you uh, claiming true, true bruja? One hundred percent. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. All right. Super hot all the way. We'll let we'll let the uh we'll let the, the community decide that after they've seen a few of these. <laughs> if if true Bruja is the, the yeah. true heir. Yeah. Hundred percent. They're gonna we're Troy gonna... Uh, no. <laughs> Every time you say hundred percent, I think about that freaking uh uh freaking um I can't remember his name. I I suck at names. I suck at names. But there's this What's one the... YouTuber who has the, who does the, the like if cats had had podcasts. Oh yeah. Oh my god. Every time, every time you say hundred percent, I just I get sucked into that freaking. <laughs> oh my god. Anyway. Well, yeah. Uh, not, <laughs> not to not to offend any of you uh, false bruja out there. But, uh... <laughs> Revolt! Revolt! <laughs> Revolt. <laughs> oh my god! So, I mean, I don't, I don't know if we want to get into into that, but I mean, it is a part of the clan's history. It, it is. I mean, in fact, I think, and it, it brings up the next step that we we need to talk about, which is the clan compulsion. Yeah, which is rebellion. Absolutely, hundred yeah. <laughs> percent. Man, I'm just feeding you these. Uh, oh my god! Yeah, no, you're just yeah. you're just all full of the you're just all full of the prompts. Um, so it says that a vampire, (laughs) it says that the vampire takes stands against whatever and whomever they see is the status quo, um, viewpoint expressed potential vessel, blah, 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 that goes into this whole thing. It says until they've gone against their orders or expectations perceived or real, the vampire receives a two dice penalty on all rolls. This compulsion ends once they've managed to either make someone, uh, change their mind by force if necessary, uh, or have done the opposite of what they're expected to do. The quintessential character who embodies this compulsion is John Bender from The Breakfast Club. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Because every single thing he says and does in that movie is to cast off the expectation and, like, the status quo. Mm -hmm. No, John John Bender... John Bender from The Breakfast Club is, is... just like the quintessential 80s bruja mm-hmm. right there. He's such a great anarchist and he's like, there's so much, there's so much that he does to like, I, I cannot see anybody playing a, an actual rebellious, angry at the system. I'm going to crack some skulls bruja without seeing a little bit of Bender in him. Oh, hundred percent. And, and there's nothing wrong with that, right? Like, no, if, no, if, not at all. That is, that is, bruja, the, if, that is the Andaluvian fighting through the blood, in my opinion. If every bruja, but, but, uh, well, let's, let's take a look at this for a second. Cause as I know this gets into our next segment a little bit, but mm-hmm. the, the idea that the rebellion of the Andaluvian is coming through, what happens if you're already rebellious? What happens if that's just your norm? It gets worse. Like you control your own rebellion. What happens right. when you cannot control your rebellion? 
Interesting. When you've okay, realized so that you've gone that. too far, but you're not stopping. Can you give me an example? Because that's fascinating. That's a fascinating thought. Okay. To have right there. Okay. Uh, you're playing a Bruja and you want to cause some trouble. So somebody told you that you have to do something and you just decide, well, screw you. You told me to do it. I'm not doing it. You get the opportunity to make it so much worse. You've now just, you're, you've, you can go out and just destroy what this person wants to do. That kind of thing is going to pop okay. up. Okay. So let me let me re reference back to our example of John Bender. Mm -hmm. So in his rebellious nature, when the uh, when when uh, Dick uh, is uh, Richard is uh, giving him Saturdays, uh -huh. and he says uh, he goes he gives him one. He's like, "I'll see you next Saturday, Bender. You want good. another one?" He goes, "Oh, I'll have to check. Yeah, I'll have to check my calendar." Well, he goes, "Well, g good. You better clear it out because I'm you know." And then you see him struggle. Yeah, for a little bit. After he, he, wants he wants he to wants stop. He wants to stop because he knows he, he wants can't. his free time. But, but he, he has people watching him. Yep, and he has to keep going. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's good. Not just, not only is he yeah. screw, not only is he screwing his Saturdays, he's screwing the principal's Saturdays. Yeah, like yeah. he is he is making it so that that man has no free time. Yeah. He he is sacrificing his ability to do things that he wants to do so that the principal is stuck there as well. And yeah, that is a wonderful a... that is a wonderful example of the Bruja Anarch pissing off the prince of a city. Yeah. In that sense. I'm way. I'm just I'm reliving that scene in my head and I'm just like, oh, it all makes sense. Oh hell right? yeah. Hell like, yeah. Even even the other students in that scene are like Stop. Dude, stop. What are you doing? Like, stop. He's proving it. a point. No, yeah. He's Does he know what point. that point is? No. No. Not at all. <laughs> but he's going to prove it. You can even see it in his face when he gets like, he's like, he's got him for, I think it's oh. six at that point. Yeah. No. For, like, for every point of status that he makes that man drop in the eyes of the other students, he is taking willpower yeah. damage. Oh, yeah. He is forcing his way through that. Definitely. Oh, yeah. 100%. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. It's funny. It's hilarious I, to me. I don't even know the reference to what you were saying about the 100% the thing, but... Yeah. yeah. As long as you get a laugh out of it, it's, I guess. It's funny as hell. Um, so, one thing that I wanted to go over with this stuff is in the book, they have archetypes. Yeah. Uh, so, we, we were talking about, like, what would be the right way to play certain things. And actually, there's something that I've been wanting to talk about, because we were talking about how, like, the elders of the clan were considered scholars yeah and but they were also still compare considered the elder clan or the 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 learned clan yes. um with that under consideration i want you to think about what knowledge was in the dark age it was a privilege it was not only just a privilege it was denied straight out by a lot of people that is such a good point too yeah they went out of their way to fight for that knowledge and okay. then, not only that, what was the highest seat of open knowledge in the Dark Ages? In the Dark Ages? Yeah. Would have been uh, the Bible, wouldn't it? Mm-mm. Like, the Library like of Alexandria. Oh, yeah. Could you imagine what the Bruja went through when that burned down? Oh. Could you imagine them going... that? In my opinion, that is the catalyst. That is when they yeah. went from the scholars, the clan of scholars, to I'm going to break everything. Such a fascinating point. Anyway, I just wanted to fit that in real quick. No, no. So <laughs> I, can, I can sit and talk about that particular like perspective for a while, just yeah. because I, 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 I'm guilty of this, but like the Bruja are not the clan that I spend a lot of my time like thinking about deeply, right? Mm -hmm. like I, I've done it for a lot of the other clans. And, and people will come to see that as we talk about them. But the Bruja is one that I have to admit, I, I haven't put that much thought into it. So that, you bringing that to my mind is like a revelation to me about like how deep and poetic the clan actually is. Oh God, so much. They are okay. arguably one of the most, I have three clans in my mind when I think about which clans are the most humane. Uh -huh. And the Bruja are definitely one of those three. I mean, yeah, the idea that like it's a, in that time period, privilege right it was it was hoarded and people didn't want to share it yeah and they definitely didn't want to educate the masses right well knowledge is a damn dangerous weapon you give to people exactly 
you give it to people who you don't think deserve it and holy crap it's just going to tear down your entire establishment yep you keep you keep your you know kings and the nobles of the time period would keep their their subjects dumb yeah well i mean hell even the kings were dumb for the most part even even the royalty it was yeah. it was literally like if we're okay i don't want to blame any actual political system so let's just go by clans in my opinion the la sombra had the most knowledge in the dark ages Oh yeah, absolutely. Yes. That now yeah. the the Ventru cool. had the money, the La Sombra had the knowledge, and the Bruja took what they needed to take to destroy the status quo. Yeah. That is that is a really fascinating like perspective. I just never seen it that way. I've never considered the reality <laughs> of that. That's honestly really cool. I have a lot, I, I'm leaving this conversation today with a lot more respect. <laughs> for my, you know, the well the, the, the clan, like, the clan of the philosopher kings. We were, you know, we were the real philosophers first, but. <laughs> so, uh, so getting getting into archetypes real quick. The first thing that they mention yeah. in here is, and probably one of my favorite uh, archetypes is they have it named as the cancer in the system. Okay. Uh, these are the Bruja who have decided that they're going to stay in the Camarilla. Yeah. They, however, still have that rebellious mind. And they're trying yep. to bring things down from the inside. And there, there's always been Bruja that are part of the Camarilla, the ones who choose to become primogen, the ones mm -hmm. who do what the elders tell them to do. They're, they're there to change it from the inside. They believe that if they can get high enough in power, they can change things. And by the time they get up to the point where they're like a prince, or God forbid, become one of the Justicars, or like hopefully try to make it into the inner circle, which I personally, I don't think any Bruja has ever gotten into the inner circle, but no. I, I think that like the power at that point corrupts and they just become oh. part of the system. Absolute power corrupts. Absolutely. Absolute. I mean, that's the whole premise of the Bruja character, Nights Rodriguez, right? Mm -hmm. And this, this particular archetype, not to interrupt the, the flow of this segment, but like, this particular archetype goes back to what I was saying when the, when the Bruja joined the Camarilla, right? Yeah. They saw uh, they saw a corrupt system about to take control, uh, and change kindred society as a whole. Mm -hmm. And we're like, we need to be there to guide it and and check it. You know, be there for the checks and balances of the other clans. Then we have the voice of the people. They are the ones who speak out against the status quo. These are these are your soapbox brew, huh? Yep. And uh, I think they fit. I think they're really good. They are definitely the core of the revolutionary anarch movement. Um, oh, yeah. They they are I in in my opinion I I've had conversations about these kinds of people with my kids really? that they might be a minority, but they seem like a majority because they're the loudest. Yeah. Yep. The loudest you know? are always heard. Yeah. Like I've, ha I've had my kids come home from school or something like that and be like, Oh, this happened because this person, why is everybody like that? And I'm just like, they're not that person's just louder than everybody else. Yeah. Yeah. And it, I think that that is an unfortunate reality of just our culture and society. Yeah. Well, I mean, the Bruja yeah. is the perfect mirror image of our culture. Honestly, though, it really is. Yeah. yeah, I mean, like, not to not to get into like, you know, modern day uh, <laughs> philosophy or anything, but like, I think I I personally think in the in the setting of the world of darkness, like the Bruja are behind like the tech industry. Yeah. To, well, I can I can definitely see that. I can like obviously see that, you but... have you obviously have your like, you know, ultra multi billionaire Ventru running the show but like in in some of those but i but like a lot of the like social media platforms and stuff mm -hmm. i think a lot of those are or like the a lot of platforms on the internet are would be contributed to like the bruja right trying to raise awareness and fight back and yeah and uh maybe they're not the ones who instigated the the technology or the the business out of it but they're the ones capitalizing on it and and yeah mm -hmm. the voice of the people concept i think thrives on the internet um i'm skipping the next one Okay. Because I want the next one to be last. Oh, okay. okay? It's it's such okay. an important thing about 5th edition vampire that it has to be last. 
Okay. Um, but the one after that is the trolling punk. This is the vocal and physical activists who are af- effectively just like uncontrollably righteous about everything mm-hmm. that they do. Uh, they are right because they're the because everybody else is wrong kind yeah. of character. They're fun. They can get annoying incredibly yeah, quickly, oh yeah. but they actually well, do. They fit really well in the game, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, they fit the clan, and you have to be careful with like the voice of the people and the trolling punk, right? Because this is a mature game that does handle mature topics. Oh, definitely. And, and I know your channel is one of those channels that is unapologetically like respectful to those to those things but you also don't shy away from talking about them i don't shy away from talking about hard subjects because i feel like if you're going to ignore them you're doing history a disservice yeah i agree like so, we're not gonna learn if we don't acknowledge the fact that we fucked up in the past exactly yeah that's my bruja coming that, that, <laughs> yeah i was gonna say that's your inner bruja like that's the whole bruja thing right but yeah the um the voice of the people in the trolling punk have an interesting place at the table mm-hmm and that you have, like, the player needs to be aware of when the character is getting a bit un- unruly. Yeah, I well, I mean, that's where, like, lines and veils and yeah. also the stoplight system comes into play. Like, you do need to look at people and go, am I pushing this too far? Yeah. Are you, oh, like, people who play Bruja need to be the most aware of the fact <laughs> that... <laughs> They get into the characters that they play, and they can literally... They, they, I guess the best way of putting it is you need to let people know that there is a difference between your thoughts and your character's thoughts, or oh, yeah. that okay. you are heightening your own thoughts in that kind of arena for a scene. Yeah. Yeah, it's... I think the Bruja definitely... Like, the whole game as a whole, obviously, is, is mature and should be handled with respect to, mm. to your fellow players. But the Bruja, I think, skirt, come the closest to that line of... At least in these particular archetypes, uh, they come the closest to, the, to pushing the boundaries of what's comfortable at the table sometimes. Yeah. But I'm curious, what, what other... What else do you have to say on the trolling punk or the voice of the people? Like... I don't know. I feel like I feel like the trolling punk should be designated, and and Vampire the Masquerade Fifth Edition specifically is designated to like neonates and incelli. Like this is a game of the younger generation taking over. Fifth Edition in general is all set around Mm -hmm. the idea of the people who are taking the world of darkness as their own. The elders are being pushed aside. The legendary guru are being sent away or found to be untrustworthy. The organizations of hunters are not doing things properly. So what you have here is a neonate bruja, in my opinion. The the, the trolling punk should be, in in my opinion, a temporary... uh, it, It should be a temporary concept. The idea that your character like a, like should a, grow out of it. Yeah, like a like a uh, an arc, a, a character arc, or yeah. Well, I mean, it uh, could take years a, of gameplay to, to grow out of that, but eventually, right. somebody's gonna punch him. <laughs> eventually, eventually, somebody bigger, probably another Bruja, is gonna be okay. It's oh, yeah. time to shut up. You're making things worse for everybody. Yeah. Have, that's, that's just where the hard. trolling punk is, in my that's opinion. Hard, yeah, the the trolling punk specifically is a hard archetype for, I, for me to play because mm-hmm. it's like when when do you shut up? When you know when do you? And that's the problem. Just... That's the problem with with the with the rebellious compulsion and either the uh, either the the frenzy or the violence um, banes. You don't shut up. You, you, it's yeah. a fundamental change in your character to realize that if you don't shut up, you're not going to survive. That's awesome. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> after, after, the, uh, after the trolling punk, there is the monster in disguise. I love the monster in disguise. They... What's it? The concept of the monster in disguise, and I'm going back to what we already talked about, the, the concept of the monster in disguise is Vincent DuPaul. 
Okay. Is my NPC in Thicker Than Water, Vincent DuPaul. When he got there, everybody loved him. And then when Tinia runs up to him and goes, oh my God, the city's on fire. Everybody's fighting. What do we do? And he just looks at her, smiles, and goes, well, that's fucking anarchy, baby doll. That's what you wanted. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Congratulations, you got what you wanted. And he took you joy won. out of it. Yeah. He, he looked like a well-mannered, well-dressed, suit-and-tie individual until it was time to cut loose. And then everybody realized yeah. who he really is. Where the payoff for all of his good behavior was going to lead him. That's the monster in disguise. That I think reading, and I'm, as you're talking, I was kind of scanning the, the paragraph on that. Mm-hmm. And it says the uh, the payoff for this behavior is startling duality of dream and reality. <laughs> Does that not summarize the very like core, you know, spirit of Clan Bruja? Yeah, it really, is really does. Constant, I feel like the monster, the monster in disguise, the monster in disguise is the trolling punk when they've grown up. Yeah, when they've realized. That just pointing at people and sticking their tongues out and saying, nah, 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 doesn't work. And they realize that they have to get into the system, become vital to the system, make it so that people re- just rely on them for everything that they do. And when it's in the darkest moment and they ask for a, handle, you, uh, a candle, you hand them a stick of dynamite. <laughs> do you think... Before we get on to this last one, because yeah. I, I know you've got something... Oh, it's one. big. This one's big. Do you, do you think that all of these art types that we've discussed so far, all of them, because of just the the inherent nature of the Bruja, they all kind of take a little bit from each other at times. Oh, like, definitely. There's every, a, there's the, always the that little bit. The people is sometimes a trolling punk, and he's also sometimes a monster in disguise. Mm-hmm. And the monster in disguise is oftentimes a cancer in the system. You know who, but he grew up from being the trolling punk. You know, so like yeah. they all kind of seem to have this, this line. I don't want to call it sameness because it's it can be vastly different based on the character, but there is kind of that realm of familiarity or similarity between each of these concepts. So far. yeah, and and that's not surprising for me because they are all the archetypes that portray rebellion. Which is what we're looking at for Clan Bruja. If if you looked at this, f- for the most part, except for the last one that we're about to cover, mm-hmm. almost all of these could be looked at as a timeline in a single Bruja's life. Yeah, maybe not specifically in order. You might have no. You might have, and if we went in order, you might have the. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna. I'm not gonna say in order, but like you might have the voice of the people who has just taken so much and so much and so much that he becomes a trolling punk. After he becomes a trolling punk and realizes that it's not getting him anywhere, he might very well become that cancer in the system. And then he'll become the monster in disguise. Yeah. Yeah, Like this, this could very well be a Bruja timeline. Yeah. It's not, it's not, these are not independent concepts in of themselves. These are, like, these are concepts presented for you to like for the player to like choose the order in which the character. These are character arcs. Between them. Yeah, the, this yeah. is the emotional development of a bruja. Do you think all brujas go through that? No, I don't. I think that it's probably a very common thing. I really do. I, I think that it's. Other, yeah, I think that it's very common. Yeah. Yeah. Where does, where, before we get onto this last one, where would you put, where does a Bruja fall, if at all, in in a place that isn't one of these? There's, like, can you think of any? That... You're always going to have those amazing players who come up to you with these awesome concepts. And the concept is going to shine through all of the tragedy that the character goes through. They're right. going to try to be that light in the dark or they're going to accept the fact that their character that they want to bring in is just a bad person and in which case the compulsions and the banes 
they're going to feed into that. If you're if you're trying to play the character who has decided that just because they're a vampire doesn't mean they're going to be a bad person, they're going to try to do as much good as possible, that violence is going to follow you everywhere. And they're going to go on a completely different re- road. Like, who knows what they're going to do? Are they going to try to go for Golconda? Are they going to go and try to lead a city of Anarchs to overthrow the oppressive Camarilla regime? Like, there, there's so many different ways that they could take it that might not actually, f- you know, fit into these things. The, the voice of the people seems like that's where it's going to start, but where is it going to go? It could, be, like, they right. might not lose hope. Even if, or they might lose complete hope and end up hermiting because they realize that no matter where they go, they are the cause of the violence. I, I'm not a particular... I'm a fan of the show. I'm not a particular fan of this character. But the character from L.A. by Night. Annabelle? Even a- Annabelle. Ate humanity for four... Oh, almost an entire four seasons. Mm-hmm. Finally took a life. That... That's she, a, that, I think she, that her, her rebellion was a... Her rebellion was a, sim, a symbol of rebelling against the beast. Yeah. Rebelling against inhumanity. Well, I mean, she, she was a to her humanity. she was a consensualist, also. Yeah, that yeah, is she. That is a that's a road, man. That's hard. Yeah, that is tough. And so I think what you just said that is kind of reflected, you know, in her in her journey is that she inevitably she she didn't really give up hope for a better canine society. But she did eventually have to give and accept that shit happens. That sometimes you have to get blood on your hands to get things done. Yeah, and that's one bump in her road. Yeah. Now give give her another ahead. give her another fifty years. Give her a century. Like eventually she's just going to a road. Like she I mean, I could be wrong. She could very well find a way to manifest you know, the Bruja ideal and and become yeah. a beacon of hope and keep her humanity as best as she can. But the story doesn't present that. It's not the easy path. No, it's not. And I understand I think, that's I think the, the point. Bruja probably have harder than Well, yeah, that's the point of the game. But I think in in you know, in the spirit of that conversation, like the Bruja probably do have it one of the worst when it comes to that. Agreed. Completely. Just no matter agreed. how much how much they want to fight for what's what they morally felt was good as a human, they're always going to end up being the thing they hate. Yeah. The last one that I wanted to cover, which is the third one listed in the book, is the Blood Worshipper. They changed the name in the book. This was the one that caused so much drama when they were first bringing out V5. I believe I remember what this was. This is the Bruja were once considered a high clan, superior to most and respected by all. Some Bruja still believe their blood is stronger than that of other clans. This is effectively the pure blood supremacist. Yeah. Um, this is the uh, this is that alt right no, uh, neo Nazi Bruja char- character concept. Yeah, this this was the one that that got a lot of hate for them having. Oh the yeah, and I can understand that. I really can. But and I'm but just like gonna. We, but I'm, like we said earlier, yeah. so, sometimes you play the bad guy. Yeah, there is no glorification. I, I think that was their intention. Yeah. Yeah. No, and and there is just a there's a sensitivity to it. And I'm not I'm not saying yeah. that anybody's in the wrong on that one cuz obviously no, there's a lot of shit going on. Like, I'm sorry. Yeah. I woke up and saw the news and went, "Wait, the Nazis are back? Why are we allowing that?" But like yeah. in the old Bruja clan book, the neo-Nazi was there. The skinhead, mm-hmm. you know, blood supremacist was there. They're not glorifying anything in this book. Obviously, this is a game about no. personal trauma. This is a game about personal horror. And the damage that, that not being a healthy person 
can happen when you inflict your personal trauma onto the world around you. Yep. And, and this, this concept embodies that. As, as much as I do not like it, and you shouldn't like it, it's a valid no, concept for play. Obviously, it not in everybody's games. Yeah, I was about to say is, it, if you have a close group of people, like like you and I know, like I know you have a close group that can explore these really dark, mature concepts mm-hmm. with, with grace. You know, you have to be able to explore these concepts with grace. You know, the, these this is not a this is not a concept that you you do haphazardly. Mm-hmm. Um, and you, I think this particular type of concept, not just this, you know, the the, the neo Nazi left, all you know, alt right extremist or supremacist, not just that, but like any concept that gets to that level, mm-hmm. you have to be, you have to have an ounce, you have to have a significant degree of trust between each of the players and the storyteller in order to to properly handle this concept and mm-hmm. play this character with grace. Now, in the past... Oh, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, I, I'm like you, I don't think that these are the good guys. By any, like None of your okay. vampire characters should ever really be the good guys. There are no good guys in this the game. Worst. There really aren't. Yeah. But these are the worst guys. Yes. And I... I understand, and I, and I, my, you know, I, I have sympathy for the people who have been wronged by these people, like that are like this. But this game, to me, has been therapeutic in a lot of ways, mm-hmm. and there is a way, there is a road, though it is very hard to find that 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 narrow road, where playing a character like this could allow someone at the table to cope to find um reprieve from the the wrongs that have been put on them yeah from somebody who was maybe similar to that concept well it's it's right? like the movie apt people with ian mckellen not familiar no uh ian mckellen plays mm-hmm. a old man who lives in a neighborhood uh and there's a kid i cannot remember who all the actors are i just remember that ian mckellen's in it um, and the kid finds out that this old man, and I believe it's based off a book, um, but he finds out that the old man in the neighborhood is actually a Nazi who's in hiding. And the kid becomes obsessed with this guy and then starts literally bullying this like near 90 year old man to put on his uniform, to goose step for him, to like perform army, like Nazi drills and stuff like that. And ends up getting wrapped up in this whole thing. It is a story that is amazing and horrifying. Uh, Like American history X. It is a story that is amazing and horrifying and horrifying. And not all stories are nice. No, 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 they're not. Well, some of the best stories, like that, you can. Some of the best stories that I've experienced, whether they were in vampire or not, were the ones that got real like that. Yeah. Um, but, and the Bruja, I think, embody that that element of like the the Bruja are a a catalyst mm-hmm. or like a vehicle to explore those really really not good things about the ugly side of humanity true would, would am i wrong in no you're 100 percent right things. i think all the, of oh, i think all the vampire clans thing. fit that though well yeah you are it, playing it, the, the, the darkest Bruja. parts of humanity <laughs> absolutely that, and that's what vampire is all about really mm-hmm. but yeah now what did, what did you what else did you have to to kind of i felt like you had more to say on the the blood worshiper i did i did um prime it's uh, we're, we're past an hour but i want to i do want to get this out so i'll try to make it as quick as possible yeah um everybody no, uh everybody who listens to to thicker than water is probably very well aware of my bruja miles trent um yeah i use uh i use um uh, michael rosenbaum as his avatar um as he was lex luther in the show smallville so he is a thin White guy with blue eyes, shaved head. This character is the epitome of the scholarly bruja. 
in his history. He actually, he, because of uh, Vincent de Paul, his sire, uh, because of his connections with various important kindred around the world, Miles travels with Beckett on occasion and acts as an assistant. Right. Now, when be, before 5th edition came out and we, we were using the 2nd edition revised uh, Laws of the Night LARP, um, Miles was a, fair, a fairly important character back then. This is I'm going back 20 years at this point um, when I <laughs> when I was doing LARP uh, for Thicker Than Water. Um, I had a person, I had a player bring in a neo-Nazi Bruja. And Miles and that Bruja, who was a female character, it was a, it was a female character, clashed massively because she did not know and she had a massive crush on miles like there's there there are some npcs that i have that players will bring in characters to get to know them because they like that character really like and 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 personally i think that might be a little unhealthy (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah but uh she brought in uh she brought in this character because she actually had i i think in an actual crush on this fictional character that i was playing and did not realize that miles trent's whole name is miles trent rosenberg and he is like a devout jewish character like i i put background information like that into my character's stories and miles has a very deep story on where he came from how he got where he is and where he is going but uh, or at least where he plans on going um and they they were stuck in a uh, it was it was a nomad situation where like nobody could go back to portland for a long time they had to like they were jumping from city to city and they were traveling in like a tricked out like uh semi and and all this stuff but there was a point in time where there was a severe situation and this neo-Nazi female Bruja got saved by a Jewish Bruja. That's And the emotional incredible. backlash that happened with her character. I really wish I could remember the name, but I'll be 100%. I don't like the player. So <laughs> not, not saying anything about her character on that one. She played the character very right. well. But um, as a person, I could just do without. Uh, so <laughs> but, we, all, we all have some of those yeah um but her the character itself went through so much oh my god i can't believe i was saved by this person that she shelved the character she actually took the character out of gameplay because she couldn't show her face around the rest of the coterie because she knew that a jewish vampire saved her life wow yeah it was it was a very deep emotional hit for her I think yeah, she played it very yeah. well, considering the fact that she is not at all a neo Nazi. <laughs> she like yeah. I do I do not like her as a person. However, she, her her morals are not that askew, you know. Yeah. Um. She she played it very very well and like seriously like disappeared before everybody woke up the next night and just like abandoned everybody. Had to bring in a new character, but like. There are places where, if done with respect and proper, you know, like, I don't, I don't know how many times I've seen people bring in Confederate soldier characters. Or, right. like, Russian military from World War II and, and stuff like that. And I haven't seen anybody take as much backlash as bringing in a neo-Nazi. And really? where I don't support the lifestyle, sometimes I want to see no, where that character is going. Um, like even if yeah, it's even I mean, if it's just sick fascination by me, it's like let's see how this character dies, you know. Like, but like it's well, it it opens up to a realm of role play that I don't think a lot of people are ready to accept. And yeah. I don't know, like I don't know if people are just terrified that somebody who's playing a character like that is going to attempt a redemption arc or something like that, but. I don't know. That's the the blood worshiper is um I'm glad that it's there. Because dealing with that yeah. type of twisted ideology in a character is the heart of Vampire the Masquerade. Absolutely. I mean, I I have to ask like is there a reason why she didn't attempt the redemption arc? Cuz I mean there are people in the real world who who like tell story like there i've heard stories you know it's not it's been a long time but Mm. i've heard stories about like these people who were raised in that twisted sick mindset of like 
one color is better than the other, which they're not, yeah. you know, but they were raised in it. And then they had their whole world come crashing down on them when the person that they had been raised to objectively hate was the one that saved them. Yeah. And it completely, like, completely undid everything that they were brainwashed into believing. I, I think... And they joined the rest of us in reality I gave I, nothing but saying nothing but praises for that. I think if that people. plot line had gone on long enough and there had been a chance for that character to have some, like, solo missions off the side, which, by the way, in my opinion, this is where Tabletop shines over LARP. Yeah. I, as a LARP storyteller, I cannot stop the whole story to go to the side and work with a person privately. It just, yeah. it doesn't, it doesn't work, especially if I'm working alone. But, um, with tabletop, you can have everybody off doing a scene and then turn to the other person every couple minutes and go, okay, let's talk about this for a little bit. Okay. Let's go back to the other scene. Um, with, uh, with that character in general, um, I think it may have been like, I, as much as I don't appreciate that person for who they are, they right. were very true to their characters. And she, playing a character, and I've seen her play so many different types of characters, and the majority of them were assholes. Just straight out, like one reason or another. I've seen her play Gangrel, I've seen her play Bruja, Toreador. They're usually an asshole or a hindrance to the coterie. Um... Mm -hmm. this one was so embarrassed in going through the fact that the Bruja are so rebellious that their options were to sabotage the game at that point in time or shelve the character. Mm -hmm. And they so took the, the... It was the graceful thing. To, they to took the adult... The yeah, they took the adult road and they, they just shelved the character. That's good. Yeah, they, you shouldn't... You know, those topics, characters like that and topics like this are already so... Yeah, you don't want to ruin like, the game. Charged. You don't want to ruin the game because you're playing a character yeah, that would be an asshole in the background. Yeah, like, these topics and characters are so charged already for the people, you know, for all, from every, by everyone, basically. Yeah. Um, You don't, don't be that guy or that girl, or that person who, who takes it to the, to actually hurting the people around you yeah and, you know ruining their experience so kudos to them um for at least handling it with real world maturity and grace yeah you know? which was a I rarity can't to, i can't speak to, <laughs> <laughs> which was a rarity the grace that they yeah i can't i can't speak to the grace that player had you know as their character mm. and, and the way they portrayed it but good for them on the grace of like putting that away without ruining the experience for everybody yeah all right. Um, with that, do we have any final thoughts about Clan Bruja in Fifth Edition? Where they stand? Well, we got pretty deep there. Yeah, we uh, did. <laughs> I I didn't expect the Bruja conversation to to get so like, you know, philosophical. But I should have. I mean, it's the Bruja. <laughs> you know, they are the they philosopher are, kings. They are the philosopher philosopher kings. Yeah. So, um, I think my final thoughts for the Bruja clan are. You know, it's an oldie but a goodie. Mm -hmm. um, and I have some. I'm I'm walking away today with more perspective for the clan than I had originally given. I when we started this, I almost said, um, you know, I almost basically were just like, ah, they're just punks, you know, and and just kind of played them off for for what they come off as <laughs> first glance. But I'm I'm actually happy to see that like there's more to the clan than I had originally been led to believe. Yeah. Uh, and I hope maybe in, in future installments of this series, we can enlighten myself to some, and maybe I can shine some light on some perspectives for you. Oh, I'm the, sure. I'm sure that, plan. like, we're going to see things from different perspectives. So I think we're both going to grow out of this. And I think oh, that, yeah. like, the community as a whole, if they decide to participate, we're going to see some amazing points of views, giving our points and counterpoints here in the comments. Oh, I can't wait to read the comments for this series. Yes, and and I'll go ahead and I, not to not to speak for you, but I want to see the community really get involved in this series. I mean, yeah. that's the whole that was the whole premise of when I presented this concept of a, of a series for you mm -hmm. to you was like, let's have a conversation. Let's let's actually get down into the real. Yeah. Let's get let's tap the vein, right? Like let's get into the the real parts of these clans, whether it's narratively 
you know, real, like real world emotions, whatever, you know? And yeah. so I'm excited to see people's experiences and like their opinions on, on some of these things and examples that maybe we didn't cover, mm-hmm. you know? Definitely. Definitely. All right. Uh, Self promotion time. Uh, let's, yeah. let's talk about what's hey, going I, on with silent comedy. Yeah, I am silent comedy. I am a little, uh, a long time uh, going on a long time friend of maquette here uh i am in the our world of darkness discord uh, i'm one of the admins you can at me ask me questions uh spark conversation with me you know get get my take on things if you ever want to or you just want to uh present some options and get some feedback i'm a big creative uh designer when it comes to like concepts and and things around rpgs i don't have a youtube or a twitch or anything like that but I, I linger in a lot of discords, um, in the, like the World of Darkness Discord and, and like the Blood Hunt and uh, you know all the VTM related game discords. Um, I occasionally lurk and and uh, share my input on things and and debate with others. Um, but I I do uh, I do kind of have a a minor kind of part time thing of like helping people with characters and fleshing out character motivations yeah. and things like that. And so if anybody, you know, I know Maquette and I have talked at great lengths, not only about characters, but just settings like and and perspectives on some of the things in the narratives of our favorite games and our favorite, you know, factions within those games. Um, So anybody who wants to, you know, join me on that at me in the discord, I'm happy to always talk to the community. I've made a lot of good friends in this community, and I'm, I'm happy to see it continue to grow and flourish. Very cool. Very cool. Um, I am Voivode Maquette. Um, and uh, I guess the biggest thing that I should talk about right now and start pushing is that I will be present at the uh, second chapter of Darkness Emergent, which will be taking place in Chicago, Illinois, uh, on June 6th through 9th. And uh, I will be playing a character there, continuing the character that I played in San Antonio for chapter one. Um, but I will be storytelling uh tabletop during the day so i look very for uh, i look i look i'm very much looking forward to uh storytelling for people of the community and the world of darkness community in general so um hopefully if you are there come see me i know uh silent's gonna be there I so that i can throw you under the bus with my drama ever. no sir i would refuse <laughs> <laughs> I refuse to be dragged down with you in your mas- your 500 and something masquerade breaches. Well, I think we're pushing like closer to 700 now, so every video oh, on my lovely. channel counts as a masquerade violation. You just so. add, you can effectively just double it because my first LARP character, uh, for the sake of genuine experience, is a caitiff. Yeah, this going to be fun. Um, we're going to have some fun. So I'm going to... I. Prince Kevin Jackson might kill me in my very first LARP. Who knows? Yeah, I'm excited to to see like who they get to play as Prince, Prince Kevin Jackson. I obviously have my I, um, I have my hopes. I'm not voicing those because they are yeah. A, they're a unconfirmed and b I don't want to frighten anybody off. So <laughs> yeah, no. I, I I would I was gonna voice it, but I don't want to. I, I didn't consider like potentially chasing them away from it i thought yeah. it would start the hype maybe it would, maybe it would work them up to the idea yeah but, uh, I'm, I I'm a little nervous my... about that i i think that's like clapping your hands before they pull the groundhog out kind of thing um... yeah, yeah. <laughs> count, count the chickens before they hatch yeah we're gonna I, i'm gonna yeah. be excited to I'm... see whatever the special guest is though yeah that's gonna be fun i i have my suspicions of uh of who's gonna play the prince kevin jackson but oh, we'll i won't see. voice those today we'll see we'll let's see. let's see if maquette gets to have any interaction with uh, the one-eyed king in chicago uh, <laughs> right all right uh we should we do need to call this to an end so this was tapping the vein and uh we just discussed bruja which is awesome and i believe next time we will be going over clan gangrel so that'll be fun. We're gonna we're gonna go in order of the core book followed by the player's guide, and then maybe after that we'll tap the vein of the hunters, and then maybe the werewolves. Yeah, are we still gonna call it tap the vein? I don't know. I mean, we could bleed out people. That's fine. That's fair. That's I, I like the. I think it fits <laughs> for all of them. Yeah. All right. 
Uh, and I Thanks guess so that's it. Me, yeah, thank you for being here. It's a pleasure. Yeah. It was all mine, definitely. Absolutely. All I right. appreciate it. All right. See you later.